Hi, thank you so much for joining me today. So today I'm going to go through the rougher brushes that I purchased. So um, following this, then um, I'll have a demo using all of the rougher brushes um, and that'll be this look that I'm wearing now. So some of the brushes, you know, have are, are dirty because I just use them. So um, let's go through, first of all, what Refer is. So Refer is a company that was created by a group of men. And I have to double check, but I believe they were like engineers. They decided to get in on the luxury makeup game and they wanted to create some of the Japanese handmade um, makeup brushes. So these are all made in Japan. Um, they are, you know, made by hand and they have a much cheaper price point than a lot of the higher end um, brands. Now, I know that their, their story kind of um, could be a little off-putting. I know that put off some people because it seemed like they were saying, you know, well, we're a group of guys and we can just do this better than people who actually know what they're doing with makeup. And I have to admit, I actually felt that way a little bit at first. I did not purchase initially because, you know, I just really wasn't sure. But the brushes are at a great price point, so I thought they were worth a look. So I purchased um, both the core set and the bespoke set, which I believe is now called the pro set. So brushes one through five are the core set. And um, you have three eye brushes and two face brushes. So we'll go through those individually in a minute. Then the pro set is brushes 12 through 20, and there are eye and face brushes there. And then they have an extra brush, um, P22, which is their bronzer brush. So originally, um, they when they started their company, they got a lot of feedback from um, you know wives and girlfriends and females that they knew on designing the initial brushes, and then they kind of put it out to, I know there were some like YouTubers and people in the makeup industry that they gave their brushes to to kind of get some feedback and um, did some, you know, they used like prototypes and so forth and kind of made some modifications. So they did some research on these brushes um, before just putting them out blindly. And they do have a lot of promotions going on right now. It's spend $168 and get $100 back I believe that $100 back has to be used at a separate time, um, but I'm not 100% on that. I'll have info in the description box below. They're also doing like buy one, get one free with um, their brushes. And uh, I think those are the main things, but they, they do have um, set options that you can purchase things in a set or individually. And um, for me, at least it was a flat $5 shipping fee. So. I purchased all of these for $2.45, including the shipping fee. And, well, actually, that's not true. The P22 I purchased separately, so I don't remember how much that one was. But the, the core set and the bespoke set together were $2.40 plus a $5 shipping fee. All right, so let's go through the brushes. First of all, they're all made out of undyed goat hair. Okay, so this is the undyed goat hair, and I commonly use Sonia G brushes and I have some with undyed goat hair as well and in my opinion the goat hair on the Sonia G brushes is much softer than the rougher brushes. These are still soft so don't get me wrong that they are still soft but they are not as soft as my um, goat hair brushes from Sonia G. They're obviously not going to be as soft as any of my um, Wayne Goss squirrel brushes or anything like that. So um, for a luxury makeup brush, okay, I think these are a good investment if you do not already have a lot of higher end brushes. So if you're just starting off or, um, you know, even like travel brushes, you know, things like that, I think this would be a um, good set to look into. But I do prefer my um, other brands. So uh, that's just my personal opinion. I know a lot of people really are enjoying these brushes. I've also heard some people who, who are not, but for the most part, I've heard very positive things about these brushes. All right, so let's go through 
the handle options. So there are two different handle options. Um, you can get the matte black, which has a matte black um, handle and barrel, or this is the classic. So you have the silver ferrule and then it's a glossy black um, handle. So is, do I have a preference between the two of them? Not really. I thought I would prefer the matte black. I think I prefer the look of the matte black. But in reality, you know, honestly, it's not making too much of a difference. I prefer how these ones here in the glossy black are tapered. And honestly, I'm not sure if um, that is related to the brush number or related to the handle. So I'll do a little research and put that in the description box. But, you know, my core set, my brushes one through five are all the matte black. And then my pro set 12 through 20 all have the tapered glossy handle. And I just, I prefer the tapered versus more of the barrel. So, um, the other thing that I'm not thrilled with with the handles, um, and this isn't true in all of these, so this one actually does a, a fairly decent job, but where the ferrule meets the handle, I've got spots where it's it doesn't feel like it sits very well, so it's kind of more of an exaggerated bump, kind of like scratchy there, if you were to rest your finger there. So it just, you know, it's not a smooth transition. And I know it's never going to be perfectly smooth, but like, for example, on my Sonia G, sorry, bump the camera, um, on my Sonia G brushes, they kind of fit together more seamlessly. So you can see that they kind of meet together in the middle, whereas on the refer brushes, it's more like the ferrule is going over top, so you're going to have a lip. And I just find that a little bit more uncomfortable if you're going to be holding the brush in that area. So um, those are my thoughts on the particular handles and so forth. Um, I do have, I, I haven't had any like wear issues with either of the handles yet. I've only had them for a week and a half, so I'm not really sure. But I do feel like the matte black, you know, this like writing and stuff won't, won't last long term. Um, it just feels like it would rub off to me, but uh, no experience with that, so. All right, let's go through the individual brushes and we're gonna go in numerical order. So number one is going to be an eye brush. And this is a, it's kind of a combo between a flat shader and a crease brush. So it's flattened. And if you look at the top portion, it's more like a shader style, um, but it, it does, um, it's more the length of a crease brush. So it's meant to be, this corset is meant to be like a set of brushes that you can use and you can accomplish everything with just those five brushes. So I think this is a good multi-use eye brush and I do, I like this one. So um, I use this one a lot typically for, um, you know, either laying down a solid color or, you know, like half my lid. So I use it for larger areas. And it's nice because it really does, this tapered end really goes nicely into the crease. You can even use it to smudge under your eyes. So this one I do think is a really nice versatile brush. Number two is a typical flat shader. It's a little um, wider and shorter than the number one. Okay, so you can see that. And I, I love flat shader brushes. They're actually my favorite eyeshadow brush shape. Um, not that I feel like I could only use a flat shader, but I really like this one for just laying down color. So, um, I like that one. Number three is the pencil brush. I don't love this pencil brush. Um, I think, you know, I wish it were slightly more tapered because it is tapered. And I apologize. It's a little bit harder to see because it's um, dirty right now, but it's tapered, but it's more of a more domed um, than I would prefer considering how flexible these bristles are. So if this were more densely packed and had this shape, I feel like it would be a bit firmer and um, would make more of a precise line a little bit more easily. But these bristles here are really soft and flexible. So, you know, it's good to get a nice soft look, but I wish it was a little bit firmer. 
um, just maybe a little bit more, if it were a little bit more dense, I think I would just prefer it. So it's just a little floppier than what I like in a pencil brush. Um, I also wish, this is the only pencil brush in the collection, and I do wish that there was at least one more with maybe a different um, size. So it'd be nice to have something a little bit bigger than this, or even something um, that is more of like a, a liner type. This is actually a lip brush, but you know how sometimes those like liner brushes have more of this shape and th they've got the nice flat edge. So something like that, I feel like um, would be a good addition to the line. All right, number four is an angled cheek brush. And I think this is a nice versatile cheek brush. Um, it has, it's semi-firm and you know, the angle makes it, it works really well with a variety of products. So for me, um, I actually prefer this type of brush for um, contour when I use that. Um, I have used this with blush and highlighter as well, and I think it works well for those applications. It is really a good all-around brush. I think their um, corset, those five brushes, they did a great job coming up with multi-use brushes. Now, if you have a variety of brushes at your disposal, I do, you know, I would use some other ones, but I think this corset would be a good like travel set because, you know, they are really multi-use. Number five is my favorite face brush from all of the rougher brushes that I have. Um, I use it primarily for blush, um, but it is a face brush. I think in the corset, it was designed ideally for like face powders and things like that. So not necessarily a blush, but also like finishing powder and things like that. I prefer bigger brushes for um, finishing powders and face powders. So for me, I like this for a brush. A blush brush so you can see it's much larger than the four but it's still not um, super large so for example my favorite brush for finishing powders is this Sonia G um, this is the master face and although um, they are pretty similar in size with the ferrule this one is going to be um, an oval it's a pinch ferrule whereas this is going to be uh, round and you can obviously see this is going to have a different shape. It's more dense and, you know, so this is just a style of brush I prefer for finishing powders. Um, but you can see it, it is similar in size. This is the um, Sonia G Face 1. And again, it's similar width in the ferrule. But again, since this one's round, it's just going to have more bristles. And I feel like for face powders, I prefer something more that shape. But this is great for me for blush. So I really like this and I like the dome shape, um, which is my preferred shape for face brushes usually. All right, so um, that is the corset. So again, three eye brushes, two face brushes. I feel like this is a great set for beginners and um, also if you're looking for some natural hair travel brushes, I think, you know, although, I. I have to check, but I think they do have a, some sort of travel set option on their site. I'm not sure if it changes anything or what, but I feel like um, you could get a whole look using just these five brushes, so it would be um, a nice travel set there. All right, so number 12 through 16 are going to be eye brushes. So um, again, I apologize for uh, the makeup on here, but this is more of the, the shape of the pencil brush, but it's much larger. And although it's tapered, it doesn't truly come to like, um, like a point. It's, a, it's actually more tapered um, you know, this way versus all around. And you can see you get a little bit of a straight edge along the top. So um, this is a nice brush for I use it more for dabbing on color for the outer edges when I have deep colors or I use it for bright colors in the inner corner of my eye. So I think it's a nice brush. Then I just show you 13 through 16. They're all like a variation of a crease brush. And I wish that there were more like styles of eyeshadow brushes in here. I really love flat shader style brushes and I wish that 
there were some other options other than what was in the course set for that one. What was that, number three? Um, I guess it was number two. Um, so although I like these brushes and I would use all of them, I just feel like for a complete eye set, I'd rather have some other shapes in here as well. So let's move on and look at each of them individually. So number 13 here you can see is going to be uh, more of a flat top, small crease brush. Um, so this, you know, I, I use more for um, darker colors and uh, any sort of minutia work. Okay, so 14, slightly bigger than that. And it's also, you can see, longer. So the bristles are longer and it's going to be more tapered at the top. And then if you look at, here is 15, I'll put that right next to it. You can see that that gets even slightly longer and more tapered. And then 16 is longer yet. So you can see that, you know, if we go um, 13, 13 through 16, they progressively get longer. So they're gonna be a little bit, um, you know, floppier as you, you go on. So again, 13, I discussed already, 14, um, good middle of the road crease brush. I like this one. I think it's very versatile. It's one that I reach for a lot out of these brushes. Um, 15, I don't use as much. It's a nice, big, fluffy crease brush. I use it more for like a blending brush, but I actually prefer the, the 16 for that. I like really like to use this when I finish my eye makeup to just kind of, I use it without any shadow on it and just kind of blend out uh, my crease area and any cleanup and so forth. So um, again, all very nice crease brushes. I mean, and with a brush like this, since they are tapered, you can use the tip um, to, you know, if you want exact placement, you can use the side, um, you can use a swirly motion. So you've got a lot of variety of uses with these crease brushes, but I still just wish, um, you know, that there were more specific brushes. Um, all right. So that was 16. 17 is the foundation brush. And I personally prefer a larger foundation brush. So let me see here. Actually, one of my favorites right now is this Kevin O'Quan um, foundation brush. And you can see that the size of the bristles is pretty similar in height to the lower end here. This one is tapered, so it gets longer on one side. Um, and then I also really enjoy this um, Guerlain foundation brush. But you can see that all the ones that I prefer are much larger than this. So this, you know, it, it's fine. It's okay. I find this one to be, this one I've actually had the most shedding out of any of the brushes. Um, Actually, I'm just pulling out a couple more. I think, yeah, so this one I've definitely experienced a bunch of shedding. I just feel like this one isn't, it feels soft when you touch it with your finger, but when I put it on my face, it feels a little scratchy to me. And I, it's just, um, it's small. I prefer a larger foundation brush all around. And I wish that it was slightly, I wish the bristles were slightly longer everything was like bigger and more dense. So um, just my personal preference, but it's okay, it works. And you know, I haven't had any problems with blending or anything like that. So it works well, I just, um, it's not my preferred size. All right, so number 18 is a cheek brush. And so is number 19, so let me put those together. So you can see that 19 is essentially a, a larger version of that. So. I like the number 18 brush. It is tapered to an actual point. So it's actually more triangular shaped up here. Um, so it's, right, it, it's not like a true dome or anything. Um, so it really does get pretty pointy up there. And um, I like this brush. I prefer it more for um, powder application than cream personally, just because I, prefer um, a dome shape brush, something more flat on top for cream blushes. But that's just a personal preference with the way I hold the brush and so forth. 
All right, so, but this is a nice cheek brush. It's a good size, you know, it's firm yet flexible and um, overall very well-rounded brush. Um, this one is slightly bigger. I like to use this one primarily on its side, um, you know, and then I have used the, the tip of it for highlighter, which worked fine. Um, but again, nice brush. Number 19, or number 20, sorry, that was 19. Number 20 is a fan brush, and you can see that it is going to be a thinner fan brush. It's floppy, you know, flexible. So this works really well for getting a loose or light application of a product. I primarily use this for highlighter. And then P22 is technically a bronzer brush, and um, I don't wear a lot of bronzer. I just, I don't really like it very much on me. <laughs> um, so I prefer to use this for finishing powders. And um, honestly, for a finishing powder, I'd prefer to have something round versus um, more of this ovular shape, but um, it works well. And I like the, the, the width of it and the um, flexibility of the bristles for finishing powders. And I have used it with bronzer a couple times to test it out. And you know, it's, it's fine, it's just for me, being so fair, I prefer to use a smaller bronzer brush myself because I don't like it to go everywhere. I'm not a person who tans. So anytime I use bronzer, um, you know, I just, I start feeling unnatural just because I just, I really, it's just not a look that I'm used to seeing on me. So um, I do really like this brush, but I use it more for finishing powder than anything else. Okay, so final thoughts on the brushes. Overall, I think they are a nice set of brushes, um, and I think they are a great introduction to natural hair brushes. I think this core set of these five brushes, they are all very versatile, and they would make a great introduction set or travel set. Um, as for the handles, I don't, it's really personal preference which appearance you prefer. I like the look of the matte black ones better. I'm just not sure how well the writing and stuff is gonna hold up on there because it feels like it's gonna rub off to me. Um, like I can actually, when I touch it, I, I don't know. It just, it feels like it's gonna come off. I can feel, um, you know, texture difference there. So uh, just, personal opinion for, or personal preference for the handles, so whatever you prefer. Um, then again, the glossy ones, I do like how these are tapered. I'm not sure if that's a glossy or matte black difference or if it's just a core versus pro set difference. For these eye brushes, I really wish they had included some additional shapes and sizes. Um, you know, I really, really, really like these soft shader style brushes. Um, the, the Builder and Worker brushes from Sonia G are good, um, they're some of my favorite styles. And these are all great crease brushes. Um, this one's not, but you know, and they have varying sizes. They're very multi-use. Um, but again, um, for me, I'd prefer to have a collection with some other shapes in there as well. And the cheek brushes, they're all pretty tapered. I wish there was something a little bit more domed because it's just my preferred shape. Foundation brush, again, I prefer it to be bigger. Fan brush, nice and light. I usually go for um, thicker fan brushes, uh, but I actually really liked this one. And again, I really like this one for, oh gosh, let's just do this again. <clears throat> Okay, so final thoughts on the brushes. I think they are a good set of brushes at a lower price point. If you are just starting to get into uh, natural hair brushes or you know more higher end brushes, I think these are a good introduction. If you are somebody who already has a bunch of natural hair brushes, I wouldn't recommend these. I don't think they are as good as the um, more expensive ones. So if you've already made that investment into more expensive brushes, 
um, you know, I don't think these are necessarily something for you unless you're looking maybe for like travel brushes or something like that. I really think this corset is, um, uh, I really like the designs of all five of these. Although there are certain things that I would change. Um, for example, this pencil brush I still wish was a bit more dense, not quite so floppy. But I feel like these shapes, you can definitely get a full look with these. I think, you know, it's a great travel set. So um, introduction or travel, I think this corset is great. I think the pro set, they are very nice. They all work well. Um, I don't have any complaints about how they work. But personally, I wish there were some other eye shapes in here. And, um, you know, it's just, I feel like it's an incomplete eye set. And considering how many eye brushes there are here, I wish they had kind of experimented with more of the flat shader shapes and um, maybe like a, another pencil brush and so forth, instead of just having a variation of crease brushes in different sizes. Although the grease, crease brush is very functional and you can use, you know, a variety of portions of the brush to get a different look. I just feel like it's not necessarily always best to have one brush that does so many things. Um, I think that's great for traveling, but if you are using a set of brushes that you're keeping at home all the time, I'd rather have a few brushes where each one is fantastic at a particular job um, versus one brush that kind of can do all of it, but maybe not necessarily as great. So that's kind of how I feel about these. They all work really well. They're very multifunctional, but they're not necessarily the best. Um, so that's my opinion on those. The cheek brushes, uh, I like them. They are nice. They're pretty firm. I actually wish one of them was a little bit more floppier just because they're both pretty similar in firmness. The number 19 is a little bit looser, but it would be nice to have just something if you're only if if you're going to have so many cheek brushes overall, I feel like you know, between this and the corset using all of these, they are all rather similar enough that, you know, they're, they're, they kind of get grouped together. Whereas I feel like if you're going to have four brushes <laughs> to use on the cheeks in, uh, from all of your, your um, you know, in, in the whole collection, I feel like you should have things that kind of range in the spectrum, whereas these are all kind of middle of the ground. So it would be nice to have something a bit floppier or something maybe, um, you know, just kind of slightly different shape. I feel like the corset did a better job because these are so different from each other, whereas in the pro set, these are very similar. And I just wish there was a little bit more to differentiate between these two in the same set. And the fan brush, I actually liked a lot more than I expected to. I don't typically, I've, I bought brushes pretty much the same size, shape, um, depth, and everything before, and I haven't really liked them. I do actually, though, really like this one. Uh, I think it's great for applying highlighter, and it's really nice and loose. I typically go for more of a thicker fan brush from, like, these are some of the ones from Sonia G, and I find I usually like the thicker ones, and that's really more for how they feel on my face, but... I do really like this one, I, um, so this is definitely one that I'll be continuing to use a lot. Uh, foundation brush, we covered when we went over that. It's okay, I wish it was bigger. And the bronzer brush, again, this was not part of the set. Um, I had to purchase this separately. I can't remember how much it was. I want to say it was $57, $60, maybe even a little more. I'm not sure. I'll put the information for this down below. All right, so when you are ordering, you can choose which handle option you like. And um, again, they've got different sets and so forth going on. Overall, I think all of these brushes are nice, um, but they are not my favorite. And, you know, I 
but I definitely think they are worthwhile to look at uh, and consider if you are just starting off with, um, you know, natural hair brushes. And the fact that these are all undyed goat hair, they can be used with powders or liquids and creams. So I feel like that's very nice because for somebody, if you're just starting off with brushes, it can be a little confusing as to what you can use with um, what kind of product. And the fact that these all have the same type of um, hair in them and they can all be used for a variety of products, I think that is very great. Um, so in my opinion, these rougher brushes are better for beginners than people who already have um, larger collections. So um, that's it for my review. And uh, if you stay tuned, I'll have a demo using these brushes. And um, any questions or comments or anything, please feel free to leave them down below. And you know, if you have any specific questions about any of these brushes or anything, um, just you know, let me know. All right. And thanks so much for joining me. And I hope to see you again okay, soon. Okay, so we're gonna start off doing a full face of makeup using the Refer brushes. So I'm going to start off um, with foundation. I have nothing on at all right now, just skincare. And we're going to mix the By Terry Starlight Rose CC Booster. And I'm just putting some on my hand. And I'm also gonna add a pump of the Surratt Dewdrop Foundation. And this is shade one and a half. All right, so I'm just gonna mix the two of these together. It's about a 50-50 ratio. And then apply this with the um, refer foundation brush. So adding the CC Booster really lightens the coverage of the um, Dewdrop Foundation. And you know, this um, CC Booster is really more, um, it's more like a moisturizer. So you're really, you're diluting the coverage and you're adding a little bit of kind of an enhanced glow. So this is the Refer Foundation Brush and it is number 17. And shedding. Um, more. So you can see it's shedding a little bit. It hasn't shed too much, um, but it, it has, I have had maybe a total of 10 hairs or so in the last week and a half that I've been using these. So, and that's, well, maybe that's 11 now. Um, but yes, this brush has had a little bit of shedding, but not a ton. Okay, so let me get that off my hand. All right, and then I'm just going to go in and add some um, under eye concealer. I'm going to use the Stila Lumiere from Sicily. And I just want a little bit, I mean, you can see I obviously have dark circles uh, every day, but... And then I'm going to just add a little bit of powder under my eyes to kind of set that a little bit. And I'm going to use the Refer 18 brush. So you can see it's really more of a tapered cheek brush. It's larger than what I would typically use to um, go under my eye. But, you know, honestly, I feel like um, I need another like in-between size here. So I'm just going to use the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydro Powder. 
I'm just gonna get a tiny bit on here because you really just need a little bit of this powder. Okay, so there, that just says, I'm not even sure how well you can tell, but it does, you know, help blur the fine lines I have a bit. Okay, so next let's move on to cheeks. And I think we'll use the Chanel Tweed Blush today. And I'm gonna go in with the, my favorite um, cheek brush. This is the number five. And um, this is my favorite of the Raffer brushes for cheeks. I have quite a few cheek brushes. Uh, let me put my hair back. I'm not used to having the, uh, don't usually have my hair curled at all, so it's not usually in the way. There we go. Let's clip that back a bit. Okay, I think. There we go. All right. So now let's move on and, um, you know, I don't usually use bronzer, but I think we'll use a little bit today just to um, show off the brush. So we'll use the P22. This is the bronzer brush. It's larger than what I would typically use for a bronzer. And I'm going to go into the Hourglass um, Ambient Lighting, the Unlocked Palette. I'm going to use this shade, which is technically a finishing powder, um, but for me, it's really more of a bronzer color. So I'm just going to go in. Oh, let's start here, actually. So I'm using a very light hand because for me, it's a little, um, the color's a little deep. And this brush is really large, so it's harder for me to be, you know, accurate with the color. So, there's that. I actually prefer using this um, brush for a finishing um, powder, so I'm actually going to use it again for that. I'm just going to wipe it off a little bit. All right, so next, let's move on to, well, let's just finish up the face. We'll use um, the Chantecaille Eclat Dew uh, from the Holiday Collection. This is the one with the pinky coating. And I will go back in with the P22 use this. So I think this really, if you can see the difference between the sides of my face, um, it really gives like a nice light blurring effect. You can see how much I've used this. The the C logo is um, not really raised too much anymore. So it's definitely a, a powder I really enjoy. All right, and let's move on to a highlight. We'll go ahead and use the Chantecaille Eclat Brillant from the Holiday Collection as well. And for the refer brushes for highlight, I like to use number 20, which is a fan brush. And it's a thin fan, so it makes getting just a small amount really easy. I really love this particular highlighter. Okay. And you can see I've got dry skin patch here. So, um, yeah, it's starting to peek through. 
All right, so let's move on to eyes. And I think today I'm gonna to go pretty neutral on the eyes. I'm gonna use one of my favorite Busy Art palettes. This is one of the Theory palettes in Cashmere. Okay, so I really, I really love this little guy. So this has like a magnetic snap and you pull this open and it folds out. Okay, and then you have three matte shades and three um, more shimmer shades. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with this top matte shade, a light one, and put that kind of all over. And I'm going to use um, <clears throat> wrapper number 14. I'm going to use the same brush and go into the shimmer shade right next to it and kind of focus more on the crease area here. And then I'm going to go in the inner corner area with that a little bit too, the inner third. All right. So, moving on, this is Refer Brush number one, and it's kind of a combination of a flat shader and a crease brush. And I'm going to go into the middle shimmer shade here, and I'm going to lay this all over the middle portion of my lid. <clears throat> And next I'm going to go in with refer number 13 and I'm going to go into the third shimmer shade and I'm going to put that um, on the outer corner. And bring that into the crease. All right, and I want to enhance this look a little bit, so I'm going to go into the matte shades as well. And I'm actually going to use, um, it's kind of like an enlarged pencil brush. It's a little bit more tapered than a typical dumb brush. This is number 12. And I'm going into the deepest matte shade. I'm just going to add a touch here. Blend that in a little. Okay. And I think I'm actually going to go in with the number three pencil brush into the medium brown matte. And I'm using this, and then I'm also going to, so I dipped it in that, and now I'm gonna dip in the darker one, so I'm kind of mixing the two. I'm gonna line the upper lashes. Just bring any extra down below. Now I'm going to take refer number 16. This is the large blending brush and I'm just going to kind of blend out the crease area and I'm not adding any shadow.
Okay, and just using the same brush, I'm gonna go back into the top shimmer shade, I'm just get a touch on the tip, and just put a little bit under my brows. All right, so I'm going to add um, mascara and... Okay, so I added some mascara. I actually used um, the Volume de Chanel in number 70, which is like a navy blue. And then I added the um, Wander Beauty uh, Brow Gel in taupe. So um, let's go ahead and add lips. And I'm actually wearing a Rubellite necklace today, so I thought um, for that we would go ahead and use the Rubellite lipstick from, this is the Lip Crystal from Chantecaille, part of the Holiday Collection. Okay, so. All right, so there's that. And you can see that the colors are um, kind of similar, but this is the Rubellite gem is actually a little bit more purple um, than the uh, lip, lip crystal. So it's a really, really pretty gem if you are interested um, in looking at those in real life. Um, you know, it's really a purpley pink color and it is a um, minor gemstone. So, you know, it's obviously not going to be at a higher price point like a ruby or something so it's always a, a good option and it's kind of a unique color so all right so that's my final look using the refer brushes if you have any questions comments or suggestions please leave them down below uh, give me a thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe if you haven't already and i hope to see you in my next video thanks so much for joining me have a great day